Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I just went through how to set up a copy of FPP version 8 onto an SD card ready to run with your Raspberry Pi or BBB. Now we're set up here on this Raspberry Pi version 5 and it's time to use one of the features, the PCIe connector on the end. Now what we're going to use that for is to take our trusty little SD card out of the equation and we're going to replace it with a proper NVMe solid state disk. Now this will run a lot faster than an SD card. It's a proper little SSD as you'd use in a modern desktop PC or, or laptop PC even. And it will run FPP far faster on a Pi 5 with greater capacity. So if you're struggling with speed um, or capacity on a Pi, then this might be an option for you. Now I'll add that this is definitely overkill for FPP. We're definitely doing it because we can rather than because we need to. So I bought this uh, NVMe SSD as a little kit um, from Pimeroni here in the UK. It came with the NVMe base and a little collection of screws and a ribbon cable. So let's get it hooked up to our Pi 5 and get FPP installed on it. Now the first thing I need to do is to turn off my Pi 5 and I'm going to just shut down FPP which is currently running. So I'm going to go to shut down, shut down. There it goes. There we are, and our little indicator on the Pi 5, the power indicator has gone red to tell us it's turned off and it's ready to power down. So there we are, so let's remove the power. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to install the disk, the NVMe disk, onto the NVMe base. So I'm just gonna Put that in at a slightly jaunty angle. There we go, that's clipped in. And now that's that's in there, but that's not held down at the end. Now in the kit, we get a little nut and bolt, a tiny little nut and bolt, that we can use to secure the end of the disc and hold it in place. So I'm just gonna put a little screw in there. Put the little nut on the back, there we go. That's a tiny little thing. There we go. So that's the, the NVMe disc is now mounted on the base. Next thing to do is we've got a whole little set of standoffs and bolts to connect them all together. So we can install those onto the Raspberry Pi. There we go, so that's the four standoffs all installed. And now we're ready to attach our NVMe base to the Pi electrically. And that's using this tiny little ribbon cable that comes with the kit. So it says there's a couple of arrows on it if you can see those. One says PCIe uh, add-on this end and Pi 5 at this end. So we're going to connect the PCIe add-on end to here. There we go. So that just pushes into there and then the lid will flip down. There we are. There we go, so that's now snugly connected onto that end. 
And now this end is a little bit awkward. So we'll just pull that end up. There we go. So we've just got to pull that connect the brown top piece of this connector just needs to lift up and then we can put I'm going to do it slightly tech handed here to try and show you there we go that goes in and then squeezes down and I don't think that quite went in let's do it again There we go. That's now gone in uh, square into the into the end, and now this will all fold over onto itself. There we go. So that it ends up sat underneath with the ribbon cable, like so. So I can now put the last four screws in. Oh, or bolts. Let's get the trusty screwdriver. There we go. So at this point, we've we've still got the SD card in the pie because we've not put anything onto the NVMe disk yet. So all we've done is we've hooked up the disk to the, the back plate, the new back plate, and we've connected that to the Pi. There we go. So there's our Pi 5 now with our back plane underneath all connected and ready to go. So let's power it up. And that's a good sign. We've got a green indicator LED and in a moment it should start to boot. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So the indicator light is flashing to show that we are indeed booting. Now, because I've not configured any networking on this Pi 5 yet, and it's not got LAN plugged in, it will boot up and then set up its own SSID uh, of FPP with the password of Christmas. So on the laptop now, I'm gonna go and look for that SSID. And there it is, it's just arrived, look. So we can connect to that. I'm gonna connect. Now, because I've logged on to this before, it's not asked me for the password, um, so I didn't need it this time. Right, it's on, it's connected. So I'm now nav gonna navigate to the default IP of 192.168.8.1. And there it is, there's our Pi 5 up and running with FPP, just as we left it after the, uh, the install. So to copy FPP and set it up onto the NVMe, all we need to do is go to status control, FPP settings. I'm gonna to go to UI and change the user interface level to advanced. And then once we've got that, we then get a new tab here called storage. So I'm gonna click on storage and we get a couple of new options here. So because we've got an NVMe drive now connected, we get a couple of NVMe actions. The first one is to flash to NVMe. So that will write a blank image of FPP to the NVMe disk at the SSD or clone and that would copy FPP and any media sequences etc to the disk. Because it's a fresh install here we can just go with a flash to 
NVMe. So I'm going to click on that. It says it can take a long time and will destroy all content on the target device. Well, that's fine. I've not done anything on that disk yet. It's a brand new disk. So let's go for it. There we go. So it's setting up the partitions. And it's now copying all of the files that are needed to run FPP onto the new SSD. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of files involved, so it does take a few moments, not a huge amount of time, I have to say, but a few moments. Now, when we went to the storage settings on FPP, if you didn't see the options for NVMe, it's because the drive hasn't been detected by the Pi 5. If that's the case, I would turn it all off and just double check all your connections and make sure the ribbon cable is properly seated at both ends um, and it's the correct way round. Once that's correct and that's been resolved, start it up again and then you should see uh, your NVMe disk become available. Now here we are, so we have set um, the NVMe up now, it's ready to go and it says flash is complete. So I can now close that and we can now change the storage device here uh, away from the MMC which is the SD card and move it across to our new NVMe in which case I actually want to go for that one. There we go. So our storage device is now the second partition on our NVMe. And as you can see, I've got 430 gig of free space. So we can get some quite big sequences on there. It's asking for a reboot, but I don't want to reboot at this point. I want to turn it off. I want to remove the SD card and then I want to fire it up directly from the NVMe disk. So I'm going to go down to shut down and shut it down. And I'm going to wait for the little indicator down here to go red, which it's just done. So it's now turned off. That's the other handy feature of the new Pi 5 is that we've actually got an on off button here uh, on the bottom uh, for the first time. So it's turned off. I can extract my SD card. There we are, that's gone. And I can then power it back on. And there we go. So it should now boot up from the NVMe disk. Now the indicator light doesn't do anything anymore to tell you that it's reading from the disk uh, because that only relates to the SD card. But FPP has actually come up already. Uh, if I go to Wi-Fi, I can see that we've got an FPP SSID available. And if I go into there, there we go, that's connected. I can then refresh this page and there we are. We're back at the initial setup and we've got no SD card. It has booted and it is running from the SSD. So I'm going to set that to disabled default. Call it FPP8 NVMe. Enable, just share the stats so they know what we're doing and they can see that features are being used or not and finish. 
There we go, it now wants to restart again to finish the conf config of the basic FPP. It's rebooting. And I'm gonna go down. It's still showing us as connected, no, right. And there we are, we have FPP up and running. So just to demonstrate then that it's all set up and it's all running from the NVMe. If I go to help and about, it tells us over here the disk utilization, what disk it's using. So it's booted from the NVMe and we've got the 430 gig of free space ready to go. So there we have it. That is the basic setup of FPP onto an NVMe uh, disk. So we, we built it initially using the regular method of Raspberry Pi Imager onto an SD card. And then once we got that, we added the NVMe disk and we pushed FPP over to the disk. We shut it down, took the SD card out, and then we were able to reboot and reset up FPP directly on the NVMe. So worries about SD card corruption are no more. We've got lots more space. It's gonna run a lot faster because the NVMe disk is a heck of a lot quicker than an SD card. And away we go. So I hope you found that useful. As always, please do like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.